All right, welcome everyone to this Thursday night's edition of Southern Woods and Waters. We got a great show lined up for you this week. Also, we had one really lined up, but uh, our guests couldn't make it. So it's weather's unfortunate. Bad. The weather's bad for them and they could not make it. So we will try and reschedule them and get them in here. So tonight you're just stuck with Joe and I, but we're going to make it worth your while. I promise you. Uh, you know, Joy, you and I, we get confronted with all kinds of different issues and everything. The one that comes to mind first and foremost is the the uh, issue of the closure of the dams, of being able to fish from a boat below the dams, uh, below the tailwaters and headwaters. And so, Andrew, if it's all right with you, we're going to open up the phone lines tonight and just let people call whenever they want to, ask us a question. It's going to be kind of like... Uh, Kind of like open line is, like Nick, Nick Maris's Maris. show, you know, you just call we in wish. and we'll try to answer as many questions as we can. Yeah. And if we don't know the answer, we're going to tell you. We don't know the answer, but if you'll hang on, we'll try and find out for you. But uh, it's unfortunate that our guests couldn't make it tonight due to the inclement weather that they were experiencing. But, uh, hey, the show must go on. And so, Joy, we're here, uh, you know, we may be substitutes but we'll make it won't we <laughs> but you know another thing joy that I, that i want to uh, talk about and you can call us here at 737-7767 if you wish to uh and uh and uh, we'll be glad to answer your question but 737-7767 i did want to talk about what uh krista presol and and uh, the kennedy law firm were saying yeah, the show about before. the land yeah. about the show right before right. this uh before southern woods and waters they were talking about the land issue and a, and a gentleman had called in and said that his mother had allowed a lot of people to come, given a permission, verbal permission, to uh, hunt and to uh, to ride ATVs and horses and all that. And he wanted to know, is his mother liable as a landowner if somebody gets hurt? And in most instances, she is. I'm sorry to say, she is. But according to Tennessee state law, hunting, you're not. You're not liable. Um, if that hunter goes out there and shoots, say, a, um, a cow, he's liable. He's got to pay for that, not the landowner. Right. If he goes and shoots somebody else, then we're talking about possibly criminal activity. The, the, the landowner's still not liable. Well, I think what he was saying is you can sue anybody for anything. Anybody if somebody doesn't right. like what you have on, they can That's sue right. you. We can have somebody over to our house. It could be a family member. They could sue us. Oh, yeah. It, you, you can get sued, but winning's another thing. Yep. We just don't want the land on it. Don't give the family any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> really? But you know what? To cure this joy is what I was talking to Mr. Kennedy about. The oh, way right. to cure this is have them sign a waiver. If you're allowing somebody to hunt on your land, say, hey, you know, I don't mind you hunting, but will you please help me and protect my myself and my family uh, the, to sign a waiver where you cannot sue uh, me uh, or my family or my inheritance uh, or, or my um, estate. estate. Uh, so that's easy. I mean, if that's easy drawn up in a piece of paper, have them sign it, date it. You sign it, date it if you're the landowner, and you're done. You're covered. I got one at our front door and the back door. That's right. We got door. one. Hey, we got Jesse. Jesse, Jesse, how can we help you tonight? Yeah, I don't know. See, you can tell me when the snatching season opens. You talking about for the paddlefish? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know right offhand, but I tell you what, if you'll give me just a, a couple of segments, I'll find you the answer, Jesse. Okay. All right. I like uh, snatching the shovel bills. Yeah, the shovel bills. Yeah. Yeah, we'll find out, Jesse, and if you will, we'll hold on, and uh, we're going to find out, and we'll say it on the air, Okay. Okay. All right. Appreciate it, my friend. Appreciate it. Thank you. And I tell you what, we we also Can want we to get talk. Get Faye on the phone. Get Faye on the phone. Okay. Get Faye on the hotline. <laughs> but uh, you know that's a good question. Paddlefish uh, season, the snatching season, and stuff like that. What's paddlefish? You know what they are—the spoonbills. Oh, the catfish, like. Yeah. Okay. Well, they don't eat meat or anything, but they just eat. Uh, the plankton and stuff like that, the algae and stuff, but not meat eaters. But, and there's a season on those? Yeah. That's a new one for me. I didn't know that. You didn't know that? Nope. I'm glad, glad you got us around and yeah. keep you yeah. out of trouble. <laughs> but I know who to call and find out. That's I'll right. Call and ask. You call Faye. Or if somebody knows. Faye, if you're watching, call, tell us. Yeah. 
Call us and let us know, Faye. Um, but also, Joel, we've been hit. Um, you and I know a lot of people like Bass Pro Shops and Guns and Leather and a few other places. They're getting bombarded by individuals buying am ammunition, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, pistols and rifles and things like that are just going crazy because of this, uh, the Obama. Um, gun scare. Gun scare. You can't I mean, live scared. You can't live scared. No. Um, but I tell you what, I, I do want to say that the NRA, I have, I have contacted the NRA. Uh, I tried to get them on the show. Um, NRA says that they only have a select few of people that they will allow to be on the show. Um, I am on the list, though, to get an NRA, one of the delegates from NRA, to come in here and please talk to us about uh, the issues. And, and, you know, it was mandated uh, through executive order uh, that Obama signed about certain things needed to take place. And, and it, certain things, you know, I don't, I'm not necessarily saying it's a bad thing if you go to a gun show and you buy a used gun, you you probably do need to get a background check. I don't have, now, a, I don't have a problem with it. And, and people that are, are living um, a clean life, walking the, the, the straight and there and, and don't have any problems, they shouldn't have a problem uh, oh. with that. And, and so, I, you know, that's okay to me. But don't you think really, Hugh, and I think everybody will agree with us, if somebody wants something, they're going to get it. 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 And uh, Shannon, Shannon, how can we help you tonight? As well as where is a deer season open? Where is there a deer season open? Yes. Okay. N now, when deer season opens is going to be the fourth Saturday in September. Fourth, here. Fourth Saturday in uh, September, what? Yeah, the fourth Saturday of September here in Tennessee always opens the archery season. Now. Tennessee is closed, and as of Monday, Kentucky's closed. Kentucky, so, Kentucky Club. But Alabama is still open. But uh, the turkeys on turkeys. Okay, turkey season will open uh, in, uh, I've got it down here. It's latter part of March, March or, let's see. No, nope, yeah, here it is. Uh, 2013 spring turkey season for Tennessee will open Saturday, March the 30th. Okay. Oh, and you're going to be allowed to get one bearded turkey per a uh, 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 one bearded turkey a day, with a max limit of four bearded turkeys per season. Okay. Okay. Um, is there any seasons open or anything or for hunting? The what? For hunting. Is there any hunting season open or anything? Okay, yes, sir, there is. We have, right now, we have small game season is still going on. We have duck season ends this Saturday. And uh, let me let me put you on hold here, but uh, duck season ends this uh, Sunday, I'm sorry. Um, small game season, that's your squirrel, your rabbit, uh, some of your other Bobcat. Uh, Bobcat stuff like that goes to February the 28th, so it'd be the last day in February. Uh, February 28th is when all of those seasons close. Hey, we got to take a break, Joy. And when we come back, we're gonna have more. Open the lines up for you. We're gonna have pictures of the week. But if you got a hot issue or a hot little question you want to ask, people are ready ready to call us at 737-7767. We'll be right back with more of this Southern Woods and Waters. Brought to you by Stan Sloan Zora Bait Company where setting the hook is an everyday thing. This segment is being brought to you by Fate Sanders Marina. Come by and check out the jewel of Percy Priest Lake. All right, this week's Pitch of the Week is being brought to you by Flowers Deer Processing. And, you know, about April 1st, I think it's going to be Flowers Garden Center. They're going to open that back up. So, But I'll tell you what, February 8th, 9th, and 10th, come on out there to the National Fairgrounds. You will see Mike and Deborah Flowers. They are highlighting a new product that they're coming out with over there at Flowers Deer Processing. So don't want to miss that. Remember, February 8th, 9th, and 10th. Now, this looks like Murderer's Row right here. This is my good friend Terry Peoples right there in the middle standing up in his uh, 
Carhartt jacket there, but uh, that is uh, Terry Peoples along with three fellow uh, rabbit hunters, and they went out to um, Pulaski, Tennessee, down there a little bit south in Giles County, and took nine swamp rabbits uh, in the morning. I think they hunted about four and a half hours, but they got nine big, long swamp rabbits and a few cottontails there, but uh, just an awesome job. We look forward to going out there with Terry before long. Now, here is a uh, deer that was taken in uh, Kentucky by Franklin Carroll. And Franklin just sent this picture in to us. And uh, Franklin, congratulations on that deer. That'll go in the freezer for you. And our next picture. Hey, look at here. If this don't get your cabin fever started, uh, this is Don Slyker. And Don went out on De in December 2012 out there at Watts Bar. And he caught this one testing a 10-pound test on a scrounger with a fluke. He was actually trying to bass fish, but he got a striper bass instead. Just an awesome job there. And we, uh, oh, okay. Uh, you can send your pictures to us here at Southern Woods and Waters, 474 James Robinson Parkway, Nashville, Tennessee, 37219. Or simply email them to me at Hugh at southernwoodsandwaters.com. And we got one more. There it is. There it is. There it is. This is Mike Fisher. And Mike Fisher, as you know, is one of the predators here in Nashville. And he went out with Don Slacker and took this very nice striper here. And then we wanted to push that one in there, too, because that's a nice striper right there. All right. Good job, Don Slacker. Don's always in. Don's your cousin. He's my cousin. He's your cousin. And, and I have good news. What do you have? I got Bobby. You got Bobby Wilson, and, and we, we, have him call in on our phone seven three seven 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 six seven. He he got Bobby. Just a, it's going it's going to okay. affect our deal. Okay. Uh, have him call he in. He needs if you can. to call. And we got. The I'm going to tell you what. If, what you, while you're talking to him, I'm going to go to Andy, and Andy. Andy, how can we help you tonight? I uh, appreciate your show. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm, I live in Mike Minville, and I've been in a discussion with a guy about. You talk about small game hunting in Tennessee. Is there still a limit on the amount of ammunition you can put in a shotgun when hunting small game? And who set that limit? Okay, yeah. Um, I'm not sure about the small game having a limit. I have not heard that now. I mean, three sh three shells in a shotgun. Can you have more than three shells in a shotgun? Yes, sir. If you're going rabbit hunting now, now, there, now it is different if you're hunting dove or quail any migratory bird that is federally protected uh you have to only have three you can only three. carry okay. three uh it could be one and you can have as many as you yes want. sir yes sir um because they even hunt those with 22s and the magazine can hold 20 rounds and so okay. so uh i do appreciate that i was wrong about that so i'm glad I learned. Yeah. Now, anything that's federally protected or, or federally regulated, not protected, but federally regulated, ducks, uh, migratory birds like dove, um, uh, I don't think you can hunt with quail with more well, than does three. Does the federal government set that or does the state set that? No, the federal government precedes that. That's federal. The okay, state, well, though, is. So much. Well, the state is in charge of enforcing that also. So it is a federal law, but the state is charged with enforcing it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So thank much. you, sir. And we got David. David, how can we help you tonight? Seven three seven. Hey, how you doing, sir? I, I got a couple questions for you. Seven, three, seven. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm one of your biggest fans. Uh, um, I got a question about the Nashville high schools. Uh, they don't have the the team Nashville uh, sport. Uh, I'm a, what is it? Uh, Christian athletes anymore in the schools? Uh, I used to be in it in 1976, 77. Isaac Litton, and uh, i was just wondering why they don't have that anymore for the kids in school. And uh, another thing I wanted to ask about Ducks Unlimited: when when are they going to have their meet at, over here at Opryland? And I'll hang up. And listen. Uh, uh Thank okay, you, man. I'm a big, huge show fan of yours, an old Tennessee sportsman. All right. Well, that, I, I, and I have to say that Jimmy Holt is alive and kicking. I, I talked to somebody today that saw him uh, yesterday. So uh, Jimmy Holt is out there. And Jimmy uh, will be at the meeting that it's been set by the Corps of Engineers talking about the dam closures. Um, 
Jimmy's going to be there at that mm. meeting on February 5th out mm. there at McGavick Pike uh, or McGavick High School on McGavick Pike. So, so Jimmy's a good friend of mine. Well, that's awesome. Well, yes, tell him we thank the world of him. We hope yes, to see him out there. Yes, sir. All right, let me in, my... let me answer his questions right quick. And and the Christian. Uh, athlete and the Christian uh, athlete program and the fishing program and the Christian sportsman program, I understand uh, I had not noticed uh, until last year. Last year, Old Hickory, uh, Tennessee, out there by DuPont, they're running an ad that they're trying to get that group started back. I, I saw some deals uh, on the uh, uh, marquee signs that they were trying to start that back. So I'll, I'll let everybody know if I can find out. If, if anybody out there is viewing the show, if you know something about that Christian athlete program or the Christian, Christian sportsman uh, or the Christian hunter program, uh, please give me a call or email me at hugh at southernwoodsandwaters.com. We'd love to know some meeting dates also. We'll televise them, tell everybody about them. Maybe you get a few more people to show up. Uh, we appreciate that. Now i got... Bobby Wilson, Bobby Wilson, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. Hey, Bobby, we had a we had a guest, and I know you get this all the time, but we had a, a, a caller call in a few minutes ago. Want to know when is the snatching season for the paddlefish? Okay, that starts after the commercial season. It's April the 24th through May the 31st. That's what I thought. Is after they get through, right? Right. They the commercial fish from go from from November 15th through April 15th, and then the snagging season for sport fishermen starts the 24th of April and goes through the 31st of May. So it's just April 21st, or 24th? 24th, yeah. To May 31st. That's right. Okay, so uh, Jesse, I know you called earlier. That is your answer right there. It's April 24th through May 31st is the snatching season for the paddlefish. So uh, don't run a day over or a day early now. Now, Bobby's going to be there with us at the core. Right. right. Bobby, Bobby, while I got you on here, it is going to be February 5th. Yes, at the McGavick High School, 6 to 8. 6 to 8 p.m. at the auditorium, right? That's correct. Bobby, we, we will be standing there side by side, my friend. I'll see you there. Thank you very much, Bobby. Thanks for calling, Good Bobby. Bye-bye. Bye. And we got Danny. Danny, how can we help you tonight? I'd like to get some advice from you if I could, please, sir. All right, sir. I hadn't been deer hunting in 15, 20 years, and I have a muzzle loader. I'm thinking about either getting a, a rifle or a crossbow, and I can't get but the one. Which would you recommend? Now let me ask you this. How much time do you have to practice? Oh, I'm retired, so I could take plenty of time. I tell you, a crossbow is going to give you a longer season. Longer season. Um, you'll be able to start hunting the fourth Saturday of September, and it goes all the way through January, the around the fifth or sixth or seventh, somewhere along in there. So it gives you a longer season. Uh, you are limiting your distance, though, so you're going to have to get close to your game. Um, I would say take no more than a 40 or a 50-yard shot with a crossbow because after that, it tends to lose a lot of momentum. Um, whereas a gun, if you're hunting with modern firearms, you are you know you can take a shot 200, 250, 300 yards if you know your weapon. Uh, both require practice. One's going to require a lot more practice. I think the crossbow requires a lot more practice. I don't think a lot of people do as much as they should. But you owe it to that animal. If you're fixing to take its life, you owe it the total highest respect possible, and that's being able to take it uh, very humanely well, and you, very quickly. Don't you think it also has to do with where he's hunting? Yeah, because it does. If he it does. is hunting a small area. If you're hunting a small it's area, thick. it's a real thick or Crossbow. something. Crossbow. is a great, great weapon of choice. Um, a gun, uh, you know, a Seals. lot of gun. Big fields and all. Big fields and everything. If you got big fields to hunt, uh, a gun comes in mighty, mighty handy. Yeah. During, the, but remember, a modern firearm is going to shorten your season. A crossbow is going to lengthen your season. Yep. So, um, I can't answer it for you, but that's that's the two choices I would have to weigh out. I weigh the pros and cons out on both. Does Thank that help you? Very you? Much, sir. Thank you. We appreciate it. And Terry, Terry, how can we help you tonight? 
Hey, Miss Joy, how y'all doing tonight? Hey, Terry. What about it, Terry Hobbs? <laughs> hey, I just want to call in and tell you, uh, anybody watching the show comes out to that fishing expo we're going to have out there. Yeah. yeah. I mentioned Southern Woods and Waters, we'll give them 10% off. Whoa. Oh, man. Now, did, let me just explain who he is, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Terry Hobbs owns, uh, owner and operator of Stand Up Jig. Uh, where they make the one of the best shaky head jigs in the country, yep. and they also make skirted jigs. He's going to have a lot of plastics out there too, aren't you, Terry? Yes, sir. We'll have some out there, and we'll have all the black lights too. And all the black lights the, in in the lights that you put around your boat. I mean, the if you want some, uh, put in your uh, storage boxes the white lights and all are we that. We're taking kind of our boat or not? Yeah, our boat will be there. We'll have it well, on it display. Has it has, it has the lights on it, but ten yeah. percent off is a Awesome show special. Do we get that's that too? They got to tell us Southern Woods and Waters. They got to be a fan. That's right. All they got to do is mention Southern Woods and Waters, right? That's it. Or, or if they can't say that all in one sentence, can they just point at me? They can do that. Here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get them just to point at me and go. He's the reason. <laughs> hey, Terry, we've got. Um, a guy, you're going to love him that's coming out there. Of course, Mike and Deborah Flowers is going to be there and all of the sponsors, but Smoking Joe. Yeah, we got we to gotta tell everybody, Smoking Joe uh, is going to be out there with his Smoking Joe fish batter. fish batter. And he's got, this year he is bringing a tartar sauce mm. that, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, it is to die for to have this tartar sauce on your catfish or your crappie. You will slap your mama away from the table on this one. Because it is some kind of good. But you got to come out to our booth out there. Uh, gonna Terry's going to be out there with Stand Up G's. We're going to have Smoking Joe, Mike and Deborah Flowers, Bill Barton with B&B Lures. Hannah's you and I be there. Team Hannah's going to be there. Uh, she's going to be signing autographs and trying to get more and more kids it's involved. So, so we Lawson. look forward to that. Ty Lawson. Which Shelby's going to be snow right. skiing. Hey, thanks, Terry. We'll be right back with you, buddy. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. And we got to go now to our product of the week. Southern Woods and Waters product of the week brought to you by FowlQuest. All right. Well, I just wanted to show you, and we just mentioned at the show coming up, February 8th, 9th, and 10th, we're going to be at the Fairgrounds Expo South. Uh, it is primarily a fishing show. Um, there is going to be some hunting out gonna there. Going to be eating in our booth. There's going to be some eating show. on there. But Bill <laughs> Barton. Bill Barton owns B&B &B Custom Lures out of Bowling Green, Kentucky. Let me Look at this, Joy. Bill just sent me this. He said, Hugh, I've got a bunch of these, and right now this is what's wearing them out. On Percy Priest. If you want to be uh, finishing first place in that bass tournament, you need to be throwing this one right here. This is the Mega Bass 101. And what we did is, is we went ahead and did a few modifications. It looks more like a thread fin shad, if you'll notice here. Got a little orange right there up underneath the neck. But that is an awesome looking bait. It's got a lot of flash to it. And I even added Joy, my favorite. I got a little little flash of boo back here, a little red flash of boo with a, a mustad hook. And I am just dying to put this in a small mouth's mouth. So uh, great, great job. b, &B Custom Lures, Bowling Green, Kentucky. Check them out at bnblures.com and uh, tell them Hugh sent you. Hey, we're going to take another break. When we come back, we're going to open up the phone lines even more. Ooh. So hurry back to more of Southern Woods and Water.